Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. It's another massive week here at HS Squad Central and a massive week for our gunners. Let's not waste any time. Here we go. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another epic episode of The Highbury Squad. Hello to all of you listening on audio via iTunes, Spotify and Acast. And of course, those on replay. And many of you will be listening on replay because it is a Champions League night. And I'm sure that you will enjoy watching Chelsea get kicked out. Maybe Emery stay in. Who knows? What I do know is my podcast brother from another brother, mother, He's back, Mr. Brother. Super Yo, It's from a brother, but a mother, right? <laughs> smooth, smooth. It's from, it's from a brother, but delivered by a mother. How you Boy. doing, everybody? How you doing? I hope you're well. Listen, and I hope you're ready for this. Let's get stuck in. So, at ease, squaddies. We got a special guest tonight. Love this fella. Um, huge fan of the Arsenal Lounge. Uh, he and Shaheen are hilarious together, but also just love their club as much as we do. It, I, I believe we're breaking him in tonight. It's his first appearance on the Highbury squad. Lev from Arsenal Lounge, welcome debut. to Squad Central. A debut. Ah! Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me and uh, a welcome to the rest of the squaddies. It's, uh, I've been looking forward to this and it, it makes a, a welcome change really to come out solo. As I was saying to Sophie earlier on, I felt like a bit like the ethnic Anton Deck with uh, Shaheen. <laughs> Everywhere I go, he's there. So it's nice to be on my own for a bit. <laughs> nice one. I oh, love it. Breaking away is always a good thing. It is. Right, uh, Lev, let's get your take. Um, a lot of our listeners, I know a few of them listen to, a good few of them listen to Arsenal Lounge. Um, be good for Kev to have a little bit of your background too, in the sense of where you've been with <clears throat> Mikel Arteta and his process and evolution revolution mm. uh, and then we'll get stuck into the kind of where we're going and the subject of of tonight's uh tonight's show well i mean look we we pride ourselves on trying to be balanced we're not one of you know that that sort of channel or those sort of fans that are um reactive or reactionary we we want what's best for the club first and foremost that's most important i'm not arteta in i'm not arteta out i'm arsenal in arsenal in contention Arsenal back in the top four or in challenging for titles, that sort of thing. So with Arteta, it's a tough one for me because we've been teetering on the sort of on 50-50. Um, we've seen some positives for sure. There's definitely been some positives. Um, he's had a big overhaul to do, a lot of work to do. And it's not just with uh, the team and, and, and the Deadwood. There's a lot of stuff going back room uh, on the training ground. He's had to change a lot of things so we've we've given him a lot of time so it has been tough at the moment as i say i've seen positive but i've also started to to see negatives as well and i can see both points of view um he's making some novice mistakes uh, befitting of a novice and you'd expect him to make mistakes on the job he's he's a young manager we're going to see it but i'm starting to think that it's costing us a, a great opportunity for top four. And at this moment in time, from what I've seen and the January window, which I think has really come back to haunt us, it's raising a lot more questions than it had before. It was all looking positive back in December. And you're looking at it now, we were saying what if in the sense of injuries and that what if has arrived and now we're looking really threadbare. So that has to also fall on his lap, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think Kev Kev was talking on the show last night about how we've out we've dipped in form and it's come at the worst time of the season. You know, he expects players at this point to be so engaged and to be just like leaving it all out there, fighting like lions, sweat, blood, tears. But it mm. seems in the Palace and the uh, Brighton games, we reverted back to type. The old Arsenal, you know, maybe Arteta's Arsenal from last season and, of course, from the first three games of this season, albeit his squad didn't come to full fruition in those three games. What's been your take on these last two matches, uh, Lev? And 
why you think, obviously, the Crystal Palace game, Partey was playing, Tierney was out, mm. the injuries ensued, and we had to deal with other things in the Southampton game. But I want to start with Palace that led to, um, to, to, to the Brighton match. The Palace one was extremely disappointing. I'm not, I'm not sure whether or not the break did us any favours. We were a team very much in the ascendancy. We had the momentum. Perhaps it worked against us. And because we were threadbare, uh, a lot of those players went out uh, on international duty. And I think that's taken its toll on us as well. Uh, the performance, the energy levels in that game against Palace were nowhere near what we'd seen prior. In fact, we were totally outworked by Palace. Um, that was the concern for me. I think we put an awful lot uh, on uh, Partey's shoulders in that game, which could also, you know, contributed to potential injury. Um, I was disappointed that Arteta did not react quick enough ta tactically, in my opinion. Um, it was clear to see what Palace were doing. They'd um, really sort of they hustled us in midfield. They they gave us no space. Odegaard got further and further away from Partey. Partey was left isolated. Um, Gallagher was running the show. And he didn't make a, a change quick enough, in my opinion. He let that go on throughout the game. And that's where he let me down or let us down, in my opinion. He had a chance to make a ch change, adapt to the tactics, and he didn't. And it only got worse. And that's the first question mark I had with him there is he didn't adapt to Vieira's tactics. He got out, he got outdone by Vieira in that game, in my opinion. Um, losing Tierney was a big blow. Um, we've had Tomiyasu out, understandable. Um, again, I, I have to say, you have to then ask, what was he doing in January? You, you weakened us. We were better off doing nothing in January, in my opinion. And the, the fact that we've got Eddie and Ketia coming on for 20 minutes to get us a goal rather than someone like a Bamiyang is also a huge disappointment. Um, the Brighton game was even worse for me because you, you've lost the midfielder due to injury. One of your, your the, the best midfielder, let's be honest, he was performing excellent. Xhaka is your next most experienced midfielder in central midfield. But what did he do? He took out the only other experienced central midfielder we had and put him out on left back and brought in an inexperienced Lokonga. Um, let's Tavares in, in the game against Palace was awful. Yes, I accept that. But Godfrey was awful in the game prior to the United game for Everton. And they gave him a second chance. He came back, he redeemed himself. And that was good man management. It's given him a boost. It's given him confidence. But what's happened to Tavares? If he's not good enough to play for against Brighton, why buy him? Surely man management wise, you say to Tavares, this is your chance to redeem yourself. Put him back in the side. Keep your strongest side possible. And th there he weakened us. And there it showed Brighton again dominated us in midfield. We didn't have any sustained control maybe until the second half. Again, disappointing. And again, I'll have to look at management and decisions made prior and during the games as well. Interesting stuff uh, from Lev, Kevin. We're kind of, I think, on the same uh, wavelength, all of us, when it comes to the decisions that he made in that game against Brighton. We talked about it on our show, Lev, last night about taking out your second best midfielder, putting him at left back. Um, now, this is all kind of come at a cost because, you know, Tottenham are now three points ahead of us. They have superior yep. goal difference. Mm. Manchester United kind of still in it too, as bad as they've been. Um, you know, we still have to play them. We've got some tough games coming up. And... Kev and I talk a lot about Champions League, not because we can win it. We all know that we are not in a position to win it. In fact, this team as it stands now probably wouldn't even get out of the group uh, phase uh, because we need strengthening. But what it does do is it puts you in the marketplace to mm. acquire better players, superior players. So the subject of tonight's show is how long can we keep hold of these players without Champions League football? Mm. Would Europa League football suffice? I say a lot on the show that we were able to sign Aubameyang, Lacazette, Thomas Partey, Kieran Tierney with Europa League football. But Kev, has the landscape changed since we made those signings in terms of every year, year on year, the better players prefer Champions League football to Europa League football. We're seeing Saka, he goes off to England, hangs out with, you know, Foden and Trent Alexander-Arnold and, you know, all of these players who are winning Premier Leagues, playing in the Champions League at the highest level. What, what's your take? You've always been very concerned 
from before that we didn't build on the Santis and the Sanchez's and the Ozil's. Where do you stand today with all of this? Should we not qualify? No, my, my, my stance hasn't changed. I still think it's we are a work in progress. Those young players are obviously going to want to play at the highest level. They want to do it with Arsenal. That is for sure. They want to do it for this football club. But if this football club is doing itself in for remember, this first season with Nikola Arteta's team. It's the first season. So, as far as I'm concerned, they will probably give it another couple of seasons. That's That, that will be it. Mm. Two more seasons. If they're signing new contracts, I think Smith Rowe has got four years. Martinelli's got four years. Saka's going to sign a new one. They probably sign four years. Two years down the line is the half is the cutoff point. Sign a four-year deal. Two years down the line is the cutoff point. If you're not challenging, if you're not winning trophies, then as far as they're concerned, if you're not right there, they have to they will have to question this football club. That's just that's just normal. Because by that time, they'd be, what, 22, 23 years old and not playing Champions League football? No, they're going to want to be... They're going to want to be playing at the highest level. That's for sure. They're going to be playing at the highest level for England and, and their countries. But two years down the line, we better be where we need to be or else I fear the worst. Do you think, Lev, that there'll be more loyalty? There's no loyalty in football, right? And the the one man club syndrome went out the window a long, a long, long time ago. Mm. Um, do you think there'll be more loyalty from a Saka and a Mill Smith Rowe than a Martinelli? Do you fear what what's your fear about this process in, in terms of not having European football and having those three in particular who are the nucleus of the future of the Arsenal. I would say Martinelli and Saka are far more important than Emil Smith-Rowe. Sorry, kids. Mm, no, I, I rate uh, Emil Smith-Rowe highly. I think there's a lot more to come from him. Yeah, he could surprise a lot, a lot of people. But, I mean, Kev's hit the nail on the head. As a, the Haylenders, you probably get a bit more credit in the bank for a little while because you still got the youthful exuberance of playing for your boyhood club. And that's here and now. But at some point, if you are a top player, at some point that diminishes and then it becomes more about your career and what's best for you. I mean, we've got to remember, this is a job as well for these guys. Mm. It's For us, it's football. Kev, you know, Kev knows better than all of us. It's a job. And you've got to do what's best for you and what's best for your career, especially if you have a higher ceiling, you could go further. And yeah, I think two years is probably what we're looking at before we start worrying. My concern as well, I mean, yeah, Martinelli is a bit more of a concern than the others because he came in, uh, he, he wasn't sort of homebred, shall we say. He came in a bit later in the day. So he's someone that I would be concerned of. I was having a conversation with Shaheen before I came on here as well. And the, qu the question I'd like to pose, throw back at you guys is, what do you think will happen in the summer if someone did come in and offer 100 million for Saka, for example? Yes, youthful exuberance is great. And yes, credit in the bank and these guys will stay. But what will our club do if someone offers 100 million for Saka? Mm -hmm. Kev asked that question on his show uh, oh, about four, four or five months ago. Um, and it created so much debate because a little bit like Grealish, right, who's older than Saka when he got sold for 100 million, mm. a lot of people saw it as an opportunity to rebuild. But then you say rebuild, but... Who do you replace him with, right? Have Villa really replaced Grealish? You could argue this season mm -hmm. they're, they're poorer. They haven't been as effective. What he brings to the team is completely different. I'm going to let Kev answer the question because he's raised it a few times. And Good. it always causes quite the debate um, with, our, with our squaddies in, in chat. Because it's inevitable. There's rumours flying around today in Spain that Barcelona is sniffing around Gabriel. Yeah, I saw that, yeah these things are inevitable. Kev, what's your take on it at four months on from when you asked the question yeah, the first I, I, time? Listen, I, 100 million, I don't think Arsenal do the business. They don't do business because they're trying to build something. Because okay. the message, the message selling him sends out, 
will not be would not be good at all. Two years down the line, if they've exhausted everything and we are, we have not hit the position, then maybe they might say, Do you know what? We have to sell one of them. But in this summer, no chance. No chance. I hope you're right, Kev. I really do. You know, because no we had a similar debate with the Tierney thing as well, didn't it? Not long ago, people were talking about would we sell Tierney? And and I was like, Well, if people are saying he's future captain, a lot of people are saying that. What message does it send out to sell your, your future captain, for example? It's going nowhere. Mm. Hope you're right, well, the, Kev. Pro the, the problem the problem with um the British players, like James says, is the premium price, <coughs> right? So even though some people may think Saka in the transfer market right now, some people think he's worth 60, 70, but he could fetch 100 million. And Arsenal need to make sure when there's a contract, look what happened with Tottenham and Harry Kane. Harry Kane signs a five-year deal. He's got no release clause in his contract, misses out on his dream move to Manchester City. We need to make sure that we protect ourselves with these contracts because we've been screwed so much in the past and we've let contracts run out and players leave for absolutely nothing. I don't think that's going to be the case with someone like a, a Saka or a Martinelli, but you know, we've definitely done stupid things in the past. Kev, you seem so sure, but this has happened to us with Fabregas, Van Persie's head was turned. It, it's it, Different it time. happens. Yeah, but, but the ambition was that Robin Van Persie yeah. was all about ambition, right? Mm. Um, and Arsenal didn't have any. That's the problem. <laughs> but do we have it now? Yeah, well, this is why we're trying to build. This is... This is what all that, them transfer windows and paying players to leave. And th this is what all that is for. It's to clear the decks to try and build something. It's one thing if, if, if the next two years it isn't built. But you, you have to create the room. You have to change the environment. Lev was right. Mikel Arteta had so much work to do that people don't see on the inside of the football club that what's the, what's the point in trying to get rid of the deadwood, trying to build this young nucleus and then sell them? It makes no sense. It actually makes no sense. So for me, like I've said before, so the concentration right now is our ambition is to get there with a young team. Yes, we do need experience we do need more experience that's what the summer's going to be for if these kids could get us into the top four it will be remarkable because we're the youngest squad in the league right mm. it would be remarkable but we are trying to build something we are trying to be ambitious and don't forget what happened before we were letting quality players leave because other teams will pay them more but that's that's I, I, that send out the wrong message. Mm. And also, but also, I I I agree with what Gruner Russ is saying here too. Is that we seem to have been in a re rebuild for how many years now, and we keep doing the same thing over and over. You remove so. We haven't been in a rebuild for all that time. We haven't. Ar Arsene Wenger weren't rebuilding. Where was he rebuilding? Okay, so let me rephrase that. We seem to be a selling club that likes to you know utilize cash flow uh and we are in a situation where we've reduced the wage bill greatly since january which fans celebrated but we are talking about how money talks you can't build a future and growth and elevate the club and the team without making those major investments. And what we've seen from ownership is they like to run a tight budget and they like to, you know, pick and choose their moments. But in order to really put their money where their mouths is, is Lev, if we do get European football here, do you see us making those kinds of moves that are necessary to keep Saka happy, to keep Martinelli happy? Well, f well firstly, going back to what Kev said, and, and in some aspects, I agree, but in others, I don't. I, I well, not I don't, but I am concerned, and this is where I'm concerned. Yes, 
we need to show ambition to keep these guys. But before I ask you a question, did we show ambition in the January window? Because we were, okay, we could say we were ahead of the game. We were where we weren't expecting to be at, at the end of December. For me, if you've got ambition, you go out and you grab that and you seize that opportunity. You you let people okay. like ANC make the Niles go. He could have covered fullback and midfield. You knew Torreira weren't coming back. You knew Gwen Doozy wasn't coming back, right? You knew the midfield was going to be light. So Bruno Guimaraes, for example, he was available. I know he's going to come good. He's going to be a good player. But regardless, with those two or three going, El Nenny's not good enough. We know all these guys are good enough. He would have had a place in the team and he would have solved the problem for now. With, for example, with Party being injured, you could have had Guimaraes and and Xhaka in midfield. Um, you, you let Aubameyang go without finding a replacement first. I mean, if Cantona can karate kick somebody in the crowd and still have a chance 18 months later, I know it might be before some people's time, man management-wise, if you can't replace that striker, is it spiting your, your nose to bite your, you know, biting your nose off to spite your own face by letting him go and not replacing him? That's coming back to haunt us. So that's where I, I question ambition. Because if you had ambition, you would have done something in January for me. Um, so I still have my doubts. I'm hopeful that we do something in the summer. We need to, because we have got a really good crop of youngsters coming through. Some of the best in Europe. I mean, Saka is amazing. Um, I still, as I said, Smith Rowe, I still think there's more to come from him. Odegaard is still young. We've got a good nucleus. Plus, plus. there's Patino, there's Flores. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, you, there's, a, there's a chain. Yeah. I mean, Haaland has definitely been doing a great job with the youngsters, but youngsters need experience. And where we're lacking at the moment is experience. You let an experienced striker go. You've you've weakened the midfield. You've made us worse. As I said before, I mean, Mo said it on our show on Monday. You would have been better off doing nothing with what we did in that transfer window because we actually weakened ourselves. So this is where I'm I'm questioning ambition. Yeah. No, Aubameyang I... weren't even playing. And when he did play, he was awful. Right? I get that, Kev. No, uh, so, so so let's be let's be real here. No, All right, but it's but about the not. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I waited my turn. I waited patiently. No, Hundred percent, Kev. Go for it. As far as I'm concerned, Obama Yang, he he was doing nothing. He weren't even training with the team. And when he weren't training with the team, the team were pushing on. Yeah, the I team were improving. Yeah. So therefore, as a, as a footballer. He ain't going to want to hang around like he didn't. He wanted out. He wouldn't commit to Arsenal. And this is the thing that makes me... Nobody says it. Nobody says... He got stripped of the captaincy. He never, ever said, listen, I can't wait to get back in the team. I'm, I'm committed to Arsenal. He never said it. Mm. He no, wanted out. So, so the best thing for everybody is he leaves. And I, I wish him well. I'm a big fan of Aubameyang. But at the end of the day, Aubameyang was taking a spot that Martinelli now, obviously, is getting more game time. Smith Rowe's been getting more game time. These guys together with their goal tally are, are, are kind of mirroring what Aubameyang used to do. So it's, it's kind of by committee. No, I, I, so, I, I hear you. The point, so, the point is, though, Kev, I agree. And I wanted a Bamiyang stripped of the captaincy, the way he behaved uh, around the North London derby. That's not the issue. I don't, I think most sensible Arsenal fans can see how we flourished when he was benched and we scored 21 goals in the month of December. The no, point no, he is benched. he weren't involved. He was benched, ostracized, sent. No, packing, he weren't involved. Whatever. He was at home. So let's right. get it right. He Either even way, on the he wasn't, he wasn't part of the team. Yeah. But the point of the matter is you can't let... And I, I hear a lot of you that said I'm being generous saying that we're a selling club. We let players go for free. This is all true. You can't let players go and not replace them when yeah. you have the youngest squad in the Premier League and you found yourself in a position to qualify for Europe. This is the mistake. I don't... I stood by Mikel Arteta when he said, see you, Aubameyang, you're out of here, 100%. But to not bring anyone in, that's the crime. The crime yeah. isn't letting Oba go. The crime is not 
bringing anyone and in so we, to replace we him. Have, we have covered this. You are right. We've said it. We've said it. I said we needed two strikers. I said we needed a midfield. I said we needed six players. We brought nobody. So the so fact we... that the team, the, the, sorry, the fact that the team were doing well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, Lev knows. I know. The squad is no. We're a couple of injuries away from catastrophe. So who's? Can I just ask then? Whose lap does this fall on? You can ask whatever it, you want. Thank you, Sophie. Whose lap does this fall on? Because look, I'm I'm the same as you guys. I've been really, um, you know, I'm I'll, I backed Arteta in the sense of look, he's a young manager. He he, had, he came with great coaching um, sort of abilities. We all knew that. The question mark was whether he could deal with a job as big as Arsenal and whether it was too soon for him. I have no doubts further down the line, uh, you know, he'll, he'll come good at some point. But at this moment in time, it just feels that there's there's no repercussions. Like, if he felt that his job was on the line, would he have played Xhaka left-back, for example, against Brighton? Or would he have played his strongest side in fear of his own job? Right now, it doesn't feel like there's any repercussions. And... The facts are, where does it fall? I mean, if you're if you're letting players go and you're not replacing them, who's at fault? At some point, we've got to ask questions. We, as layman fans, apart from you, Kev, because obviously we know what, what you did in your time, but as layman fans, if we can see it and we knew we were only a couple of injuries away, how are you not planning ahead and knowing that why are we going to risk this top four? We gambled top four and right now we're losing. And unless we get those players back that are injured now, that top four race for me is is diminishing. It's, it's diminished, definitely. 100%. That cushion's gone. Spurs are above us. Don't like it. But the fact of the matter is, it's, it's, it's a decision within the club that they've made. Look, they went all out to try and get a striker. It didn't work out. He went to Juventus. Whatever. Mm. The fact of the matter is, we needed bodies in. And they took the gamble. It's a gamble. At the end of the day, we, we discussed it on here. It's a gamble to not bring anybody in. We took that gamble, and now the gamble looks like it's not paying off. We still got an opportunity, but do you know what, what I, I, I see? We can talk about people, sh we should have done this and should have done that. We still got a team who, who were doing well. Up until the international break, our team were looking the business. The, the team of the last two games are not the same. And we could talk about selection or whatever, but this, that, that togetherness, that fight isn't there. But if you're going to gamble, gamble upwards. Don't gamble downwards. That, that's where I think ambition is lacking. Because if you're going to gamble, for me, a gamble is, oh my God, we've got a chance to get top four here. Let's go and get someone in. Or let's strengthen the central midfield. Let's not risk it. Instead, what we did was we gambled downwards. We tried to, to cheap it, really. We tried to get away with it. And as Arsenal fans, historically, we can all say this. If there's ever a time a player can get injured at the worst time, Arsenal will do it. It will happen at Arsenal. It's happened historically over the years. At crucial moments, we lose players. So why not? take the gamble upwards, why not get a player in to cover that? Lev, we don't know. Whoever they wanted, we don't know whether they could get them or not. Because mm. I'm sure if they could have gotten who they wanted, they would have got them. I believe that they, uh, what Guna Colt, and I've been really consistent on this on the show, they had a plan at the start of the season. I don't believe for a second they thought with this team that we would be in a position to qualify for the yep. Champions League. And they rolled the dice. Uh, Kev mm -hmm. and I have said this, stuck to their guns, kept to their strategy, and it backfired. Now, if you're, it's like being at the races or in a casino, right? You're on a roll. And, every, and when you get on a winning roll, you're like, you keep gambling, you keep gambling. And then, yeah. you know, you start playing with house money, right? And for us, it feels like we're, our house money is is cash flow, right? But at the same time, you know, our gamble was let's let's just clear those decks. Let's, that mm. it wasn't a gamble; it was sticking to the original plan. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen, like you guys, us th roll the dice and say, okay, you know what? Even if it's on loan, let's try and find a striker. Even if it's on loan, let's try and convince. 
um, Wijnaldum to come for like a few months to help yeah. us out. You know, let's try these things. Now we're here. And when you look at United and Arsenal, they did none of that. And they're the two teams that are struggling the most now to finish in that top four. So has anything really changed at the Arsenal? We haven't been in Europe in the Champions League for f five, six years now? Yeah. Six years? Five, five, five years, I think. Um, five years. Mikel Arteta got us kicked out of Europe altogether last season. If you are an ambitious club and you want to be back, in order to kind of get some type of competitiveness back at the club. And you finally find yourself in the situation that you haven't been in for five or six seasons. Why wouldn't you go down that road? Which is why I circle back to what Lev said too. Has anything really changed? Because if it has, wouldn't they have said, I know what we said in, uh, in the summer, but wow, we could do this. Mm. That's the part that boggles my mind completely. It boggles everybody's mind, but they're sticking to the plan. That's what they're doing. You know, everybody could see it. We wanted it desperately, but they never pulled the trigger. Why? Because maybe trying to get people was a bit too rich. Maybe trying to pull somebody on loan was you know that we want a, a huge fee because it's not just like we can we want him on loan and then it's agreed it's it's, it's a lot more difficult than that trust me so but the, they but just decided to stay with what they've got but if you want if you're like wanting Saka to sign the new contract right you've mm. you, you you're going down this road Lev like the ambition we need Where's, where is that proof of ambition to these players, which I circle back to the theme of the show, is keeping them? Mm. Well, it's all interlinked, isn't it, Sophie? Like, you know, as a players, you want to see that your team is ambitious. Now, imagine, like you rightly said earlier on, you know, these guys meet up at international duty. You've got the likes of Foden and Grealish and all these guys and Sterling. They're all at City and all these, all these teams are ambitious and they want to win things. Uh, imagine you're looking at your side... And thinking to yourself, we've got a chance of top four here. We, we've got games in hand. Um, you know, we've let our talisman striker go. And, and I agree with Kev. He wasn't performing and he doesn't fit the way Arteta played. I still personally think I would have tried to squeeze a bit more out of Aubameyang. I'd rather have him coming on 20 minutes to go to get a goal than Eddie Nketiah. I'll still stand by that. However, I agree with the stance. He let him go. But as a player, as a young player like Saka or, or, or Smithrow or Martinelli, when you look at it and, and you see even Spurs in that January window, when I got Bentaku and Kulisevsky, right? Look at the difference it made, those two signings. Massive difference. They were lacking in midfield. It's changed them as a team now. So as a youngster, I would look at that and question my team's ambition moving forward. It's a, it's a golden opportunity we missed out on. So if you want to keep these guys and you want to offer them Champions, Champions League football, then go out and show that that's what you want to do. And I don't think that we've done that this season. Kev. So there's an um, argument to say that the manager is putting his trust in them. There is, Kev. You're 100%. There's a, you know, they've got the team to, into this position. Mm -hmm. Because after Jan... We didn't, we didn't have all that cushion in January. Remember? We didn't have that cushion in January. So we're talking now, in hindsight, back when the decision was made then and we actually went on a run since then with the same players. Mm. So I, I totally get it. But what we got to do sometimes is look at the whole picture. I understand and I'm with you on why didn't we bring players in? Because yeah. I don't want my bench looking like a, a, an advert for mother care. Do you know what I mean? That's, <laughs> that's madness. Yeah. But here's, here's the difference. Whoever you pick and whoever you play. And I think so, Sophie alluded to it at the start. For me... That togetherness is what really got us to this spot because there were times where we had, we weren't playing well, but that togetherness and that battle we had in us got us a win. It moved us up the table. And the last two games, I haven't seen it. And that's the worry for me. That really is the worry for me. Well, it all comes back to lacking in depth and it all comes back to then. It's, it's a cycle. No, 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 it's not. Yeah. Not lacking you in depth. You don't think so. 
You don't think he's lacking in depth? It's I think we're lacking. I think we're lacking in depth. No, Kevin. we like we, depth, we, but we like depth, but that lack of depth still got us to where we were. What I'm saying is, when you saw the team playing before international, and you've seen the team play now, they're not the same team. But they they don't have the same energy. They don't have the same fight. That that's the point. So, but also don't is, have the same personnel. We, we've got no fullbacks. In Ke- Tierney and Tommy Asu are gone. Huge yeah, but that shouldn't matter. Is my point, Les. Les no, you're right. Whoever you, whoever, whoever you pick, that should be the constant. Fair enough. The, the replacements might not be as good as the ones who are not there. I That's get it. that. Mm. But the one thing you do know, you've got a fight and you've got a scrap. And I'm not seeing that. The issue too, though, Kev, like I said last night, is you have to better prepare for a season. And you can't bank. Beyond our starting 11, we are weak source. Yeah. And we weren't prepared for that. And every team has gone, look at Leicester, depleted for most of the season with two or three key players. See, um, Evans, uh, Fofana and Vardy cost them greatly all season, right? Liverpool, even last season with their major injuries at the back, cost them majorly, right? To think that we could roll the dice with the starting 11 and it not affect us, such naivety. You don't prepare a business like that. You have to have a contingency plan. And that is the biggest concern in the sense of seeing the same mistakes repeated again, despite the fact that, yes, we've made progress this season. Yes, we found ourselves in this situation. Our summer signings have worked out. Arteta has cleared the decks, got rid of the deadwood, removed the toxicity, all of that stuff. But I'm sorry, they have also left the team short. 100%. But again, we, we discussed this in at the end of January. Do you remember, Soph? And we said, we are not, we are not, we don't have the depth. We do not have the depth. But we got to run with it now. Because I don't think for one minute we weren't trying to get players in, like I said at the time. I don't, th- I think we would have been trying to get players in. The fact of the matter is, we didn't get anyone in. And Sophie, oh sorry, Kev. Sorry, sorry, Lev. And, no, and no, the no. way it's looking, the way it's looking is coming back to bite us on the ass. Um, Sophie and Kev, I like to ask as well. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I agree with you there, but there were players available. I think there were players available. We could have done something, we could have done some sort of business. Uh, I if if Spurs can get two players in of the quality that they've just got in from Juve, why couldn't we? Is it, is, is it that we're gun-shy based on the poor signings from before to the point that we're even scared to take the risk now? Well, also, if I could add to that, Kev, before you mm. jump in, mm. is money is the number one attraction for a lot of players. It just is. Players have short careers. They don't know when it's going to end. They've got to take care of business, their families. Mm. Number one. Number one. I would, right? So a player like Bruno Gamarish, who would have been perfect, perfect for us, signs for Newcastle. Why? They could have been relegated, but he signed for Newcastle. He doesn't have guaranteed European football next season. What did they guarantee him? A very handsome wage packet. And that's the type of player that we could have signed. The could have, should have, would have signings of the Arsenal Football Club. There's a litany. I mean, the list. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's an encyclopedia on it. Of all of them. <laughs> but that's an example of even, I know he was an ex-Tottenham player. He's injured now. But Kieran Trippier, when he came into Newcastle, the immediate effect he had on that team And I'm not saying him, but it's another example of a player who came in and helped them survive relegation. Chris Wood, the same. You know, Luis Diaz, Liverpool. 
is going to has given them an extra x factor yeah i just don't understand how we couldn't find a player two players <laughs> and then if you talk about youth right you just poo pooed two young players that you signed and stripped them of their confidence yep it's such a mixed bag of messages i just don't understand it i just don't well again we, we're going over the same old thing but that's the same old arsenal no but it's the same old thing from from january we, we didn't get anybody we have to move on we can't keep we can't keep going back and, and and drawing water from that well. We're here now, eight games to go. But we keep doing the same thing over and no, over. No, it's done, Sophie. We we haven't got anybody. We've argued that one. Why didn't we do it? You agreed. Lev said it. I said it. But it's going to get us nowhere by just churning over all that old ground. We, we didn't get anybody. That's could we have? I'm sure. I hope we could have. <laughs> We really wish we could have, but we didn't. And it's coming back to bite us right now. So, but, And where, that's where, going to be a discussion that Arsenal fans have for a long time. Go on, Lev, before where, we... Uh, again, I'm gonna, yeah, again, I'll ask the question. Where Where is the um, liability? Where is the response? Where is the actual liability for anybody in that club for these mistakes? I mean, we've been making these mistakes for a long time. It's not something new. Uh, we we poor signings from before, and now we've got an opportunity. He didn't make any signings, so who's who's to blame? I've, we've been, we've you've asked this question before, and I've said they will make a decision on the inside that they're not going to go for anyone, or they're not going to sign this player, and they've, that's what they've done. So it's it's all it's everybody on the inside. It's the manager, it's Edu, it's all of them because they all sign players together. That's it. I think it's really funny when people say, uh, let's look forward and plan for the future when the future is always living in the past mm. and doing the same thing over and over again. They call that sign of madness. And I believe the reason why many shows like ours, many fans talk about this is because number one, this is fresh and new. We've been on this great run for a little bit since January, um, a terrible month for us. And we're here again, having the same conversation, and it is mind blowing. Yeah, but we're only having this conversation all the time. No, but we're only having this conversation because we lost the last two games. Two games we should have won. There's no, no, there's no, no should have. No, no, Sophie, in football. we're having this conversation that. because we lost the last two games. Because you know what? I never heard none of this conversation when we were playing Aston Villa, or before that. No, but there fans wasn't were any always worried about, oh my gosh, everyone yeah, needs to stay fit. We weren't if they don't, we're in what trouble. I'm say, what I'm saying is we weren't having this conversation. Now we can regurgitate it. Of course we can. We can okay, regurgitate so... it all we like. But it's not going to make any difference. Lev, let's get you out on this so everyone can go watch um, the uh, second half of the Champions League games tonight. Um, no problem. Winning 1-0, if... by the way. Oh, comes... thanks for the good news. <laughs> Kev. Yeah, cheers for that, mate. Um, <laughs> I just looked down. Jesus. And JS, yes, I agree with you a little bit on that. We were punching above our weight. And Lee said it on his show the other night, too. He was. We benefited from United being bad and West Ham falling apart a little bit. Uh, Tottenham having gone through, um, you know, new manager re being replaced. Son was injured for a bit. I mean, they're now on we're fire right apart. now. Jeez. And now we're falling apart at the last uh, moment of the season. Um, so what's mind-blowing is how fans believe in their plan for Arsenal and can't see the club's plan and then get surprised. They're ex succeeding and exceeding their plan. The proof will be in the May pudding. Exceeding, mm. it, we're not, we're not prepared for the long haul. We don't even have European football. We got kicked out of the FA Cup ages ago. We've been playing once every ten days for most of the season. This is crazy. hence why we're in this position. I mean, it's uh, it's insane. So, Lev, yes, if we do not get European football at all. What happens to Mikel Arteta in your... If you were the Cronkies' oh, extra son, 
It's such and a horrible you, question. If you were Josh Cronkey and you had Sophie's horrible, mate. I tell you, <laughs> it's a, it's a hor- I, I, Kev, it's a horrible question because I don't. I hate it's all a, this. Re, it's someone a, what, out business. I hate it's not, it. It's not. It's not out. It's what would you no, do? No, no, he's saying he hates that business. Yeah, that I, thinking, I, I, that way of I thinking. hate, you know, I don't want no one to lose their job. And, you know, I, I do think he has a lot of potential. But for me, as an Arsenal fan, I want to see my team challenging. And I think he's made a lot of novice mistakes that if we had, for example, someone like Conte in, instead, I think these mistakes wouldn't have been made. So that's where the dilemma is for me. Personally, I want a manager that I know will take us to the next level. However... I also know that that's not going to happen because a lot of work's gone in in the background that if he was to go, that would all pretty much be scrapped and that would be pointless too. So personally, I want to see a manager that will take us to the next levels now. But uh, and I, uh, if we finish outside the top four, my gut would say that was your fault. A more experienced manager would have got us into the top four and I would find someone more experienced. But at the same time, I know that's not going to happen. So there you go. Amira, we do not count the conference, European Conference League. Absolutely no. And if we do end up there... <laughs> we'll give we it back. To, if we'll we got it back, ask, we'll give it back. <laughs> we'll have to ask Tottenham how the hell they got themselves out of it without any fines whatsoever, because that is absolutely insane. And Lev, I hear what you're saying. But the other thing too is that there's a contract renewal up, right? Um, mm. Would you give him a new contract then? How about we go there? If he finishes he outside any- the top four, no. I would give him. I, I would say to him, "You're not getting a new contract. Let's see how it goes this season, and and I'll take it from there." But actually, tying him down for another four years or three, not not based on what I've seen. And there's someone in the chats who said, uh, "Basically, you're Arteta over Arsenal." I don't know how he came to that conclusion after what I just said. However, um, no, I wouldn't offer him a new contract if he comes out if he's not making top four. Not at this stage, no. Uh, he actually. Yeah, I don't know where you got that from because that's not the case. Makes um, no sense at all. Yeah, I think mm. the th- I think everyone here is Arsenal over anyone. All it's day. the club first all day long, all day. and yeah. that's all that's all that uh, we want. Right? It is half time. Chelsea are one nil up. They live to fight a second half day, which uh, <laughs> we're going to go off and watch. Right. Um, Lev, where does it end up for you? Do you feel that we will get top four? And is Europa League okay with you? I'll be very honest with you. At the start of the season, when we were asked on our show, I said we'll probably finish around sixth, sixth or fifth. So, you know, you can argue he stays and, you know, we're okay. However, I still think it's a real chance missed. I really do. And and that's where, that's what bothers me. I just think that we could have had that top four and it, it would be a disappointment for me this season. Yeah. I think we'd all be hugely disappointed because we've found ourselves in the position. For me, even if we get back into the Europa League, it gives us the opportunity to sign better players. I mean, I, I, you know, you got Aubameyang, Lacazette, Partey, Tierney with Europa League football. And look, now you've got teams like Barcelona fighting to win that. You know, uh, I think it's a improved competition year on year and it does bring financial rewards and benefits. Um, and so let's hope that if we end up sixth, that's where I think the serious conversations uh, really start. That is it. Oof. I said 40 minutes. I only went eight minutes over, Super Kev. Sophie, Le- Tom, only eight minutes. I'm proud of you. I am got proud of you. It did get a bit hot at the time. not going to lie. <laughs> it Kev, does sometimes Kev, live. It Kev does gave me that. Sometimes. Kev gave me that stare. Some of those centre backs must have had during his career. I was like, oh, all right, okay. No, but, no, um, no was, Do you know what else, Lev? I just want to say this as well. Mm. I think where Arsenal have been this season has been remarkable because we've played the season without a striker scoring goals. Yeah. You tell me another team in the league who could survive like that. Apart from Manchester City, I suppose. Well, tell me another team who would do that, Kev. But but that's the thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. Lacazette is, isn't on the boil. He makes the team better with, with a lot of his play, which has gone west in the last two days, south mm. in the last two days. But generally, he's been better. Aubameyang wasn't. We, he, was missing, he was missing dollies in front of the goal. But we've been there without a striker all season. Not that's many true. teams could do that. Maybe that's why Arteta believes 
you know what? I'm going to go with this for now. And then I've got to, we, we have to make some moves in the summer. It's all going to come down to the summer for me. All yeah, of it. Fingers crossed. All of it. 100%. That was um, just a little bit of Kev time, so. so. <laughs> <laughs> Can't let Lev, couldn't let Lev leave without that one. I just had to Go have a little yeah, Kev time. I'll, I'll take a, a bit of Kev time all day long. <laughs> you keep giving it to me, Kev. Time. You can ask Kev time. Is there anything you'd like to ask Kev before we depart and before I have Vinny just give you a little smack right here? Hit that like button. Oh, um, oh, if you say anything I'd like to ask Kev, not, not really. I just, listen, it's just a pleasure being here. I used to sneak in as a steward at, at, at Highbury. Um, just to watch the likes of Kev and, and, and all those boys. So it's just crazy that I'm sitting here talking to him. I, I used to go in with my... Oh, I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I used to go in with my steward. You know, remember the old steward, uh, like body warmers, Kev? And then yeah. I used to, the game kicked off. That, that body warmer would get hidden <laughs> under the chairs and I'd be sitting. And then after, you, you guys used to get paid upstairs, I think, in, in, in cash in an envelope. I, I remember seeing Andy Cole and all that. Like, so, who? Look, who used to I, get paid in cash? I, I used to see you the know. players upstairs. I'm telling you, there was some serious... It must have been George Graham. I, 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 don't, I don't know who... <laughs> it ain't nothing at Arsenal, mate. I don't know what funny business you're going on with Lev, but he's got nothing to oh, do come with on, Kev. Us. You can admit it now, Kev. No, that nothing was probably to do with Tuesday, me, Tuesday Club bets yeah, passing got, around. <laughs> the end of the story was I got caught on CCTV in the crowd and I lost my job as a steward. Oh. So look, I'm here talking to you and it's a great pleasure. <laughs> I just I just can't believe I'm talking to you. You sure it weren't you lot getting paid? <laughs> Cash. Not enough, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no. oh, that's too funny. Brilliant oh. stuff, Lev. Tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, you can find us on, uh, we've got our own channel, the Arsenal Lounge. Uh, if, if you haven't seen it before, please Drop us a little visit, subscribe, uh, you know, and we'd love to have a chat with everybody. But um, also you get me on Twitter at Levandra if you want to have a chat. Look, I just love talking about the game. I love the club. That's all I care about. I just want what's best for the club. It's not about who's in, who's out. It's just about what's best for the club. That's it. Love that. Brilliant stuff. And uh, we always end with Newman's ratings as well. Kev, you'll love this tonight. Nine for me, oh. nine for Lev, two for you. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy. Yes. Yes, Newman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Newman works the opposite way, just like his art. So my two is really a 22. Thanks, Newman. Yeah. That, positive. He's positive did. about everything, Kev, isn't he? He turns everything into a positive. Got a he two. Does. Yes. Listen, oh, if that. Newman starts giving me higher marks, so cool, I worry. Yeah, Trust something's me. wrong. Oh, something's... great. I've got a nine. Cheers, Newman. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Right, Super Kev, uh, take us out. We'll be back um, tomorrow with something. Um, in fact, we might not have a show tomorrow, but I'll let you guys know on the community page and also on Twitter as Squaddies. well. Thanks, Sophie. Hostess with the Moses. Thanks to Lev for joining us. Really appreciate it. You come in on with us, Lev, and uh, it was a it was a nice chat about the club we love. Let's be honest. No, 100%. Sophie, squaddies, Lev, look after yourself. And remember, oh, no, no. I'm worried he's giving me yes. five grand now. No. I've got a listen, zero. Listen, <laughs> everybody, even Newman, look after yourself. Take care, and we love you, and we'll see you soon. Take care, squaddies. And remember, at ease. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.